Hi everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I do the cat eye and nose for this portrait. So this is part two of the portrait course. There will be two other parts where I go through the white fur and black fur. So I'm just going to show you how I did one of the cat eyes and the process is the same for both so I'm just going to show you in real time how I did one of them. So here you can see the colours I'm using are light olive 40%, dark olive, raw sienna and olive brown. So like in the last couple of videos if you'll have seen those I'm basically just going to create a rough colour base and this is just kind of blocking in the colours as I see them. So towards the edge of the eye it's a little warmer and more yellows and browns. So I'm just going to use the, I think it's raw sienna on the outer corner of the eye. And again these are just really rough colours as I see them. And then I'll use the dark olive in the inner corner of the eye towards the pupil area. So you can't really see too much and that's because the colour kind of activates once you add the water onto it. So although it looks really really kind of faint, the colours will pop out and this is just the first initial layer that I'm going to put down. So as you can see, just very lightly blocking in those colours. I find that if you press down too hard, and it's a lot harder to kind of wet that layer and you get really streaky lines. So I like to keep them really light, really light pressure and then yeah, kind of add water to activate it. So I think this was when I used the burnt ochre. It was just a little bit more of an orangey brown. Um, still kind of greeny, but I just put that slightly on the outer corner there. And again, just fill in the inner part with more greens. So I'm not sure if you can see but on the bottom left I have my iPad with my reference photo. I didn't use the black and white one that we printed out last week because I I wanted to do this part in colour so yeah I got my iPad on the left and that is my colour reference photo. And here you can see I'm just taking a damp brush and I'm going to blend all those colours together just activating that pigment. It's still quite yellow, but that's okay. And yeah, just blending them together. So I dip my paintbrush in water, and then just with my hand, kind of take off a little bit of excess water so it's not dripping wet, it's just a little bit damp. So it'll kind of blend the colours together but not move them around. Okay, so hopefully you can see that I do the same process on the other eye, just yeah, add those base colours and then activate them with water. So I like to add a nice wet base because I find when I add the dry colours on top they really kind of pop out, they're not quite as faint as when we first initially added them onto just a blank paper. So I'm taking, I think it's the raw sienna or the burnt ochre here. I'm just going on the outer corner of the eye again and just adding a little bit more pigment and you can already see how it's starting to pop out a lot more than the right eye and that's just because we added a little bit of colour on top and here I'm going over it with one of the green colours and I'm just, yeah, just outlining the eye on the left so it's okay that the eye looks a little bit yellow I find yellow is a really good base for green because it's kind of a really good highlight colour for green eyes so I usually like to work a lot lighter and then go darker not just in kind of tone but also in colour so lighter is a good um, it's a good lighter colour than green if that makes sense and then just taking a little bit of the dark flesh and going over the eye again paying really close attention to my reference photo and just drawing on what the colours I see so if you see a different colour you can do that that's totally fine these are just the colours I see and I really like the dark olive for the 
inner corner of the eye or the inner circle of the eye, sorry, near the iris. And that's just where it's a little bit more green, uh, but yet really kind of pops out those little details. I'm not too sure what they're called, but the little lines in the iris as well. I'm trying to, yeah, trying to sketch those in with this pencil. And you can see I'm just doing it really kind of scribbly, or not super precise or anything. I'm just getting the general direction of where those lines are on the eye. And here I have a tiny little pencil. I think this is my um, French grey. And it's a really nice kind of warm grey colour, which is perfect for adding shadows. And you can see I've also left a negative space where the highlights are. I do like to do this because I find it's a lot easier to keep them nice and white if I just leave that space blank. So I'm completely trying to avoid those areas when I'm colouring. And you can see I'm just taking a little bit of that raw sienna and just going around where kind of the pupil sits. So just darkening that up. And here I'm using the steel grey just to add those highlights because the steel grey, unlike the French grey, is very blue toned. And I tried to use quite a limited colour palette on this piece. Um, so instead of using blue, I used the steel grey which I found added... Yeah, look, you can see already it's added a really nice kind of blue tone. And it looks quite green when paired with the Royal Sienna, so I really liked those colours together. And again, taking a little bit of green, and now I am focusing more on the details. So I'm adding those little lines in the iris that you can see if you pay attention to your reference photo. The eyes kind of have these tiny little slits and little lines of colour, streaks if you will, that go through the iris. So I'm just jotting those down with my pencils. And again, just adding the highlights with the French grey in the corner of the eye. I also like to use the, um, I think it was raw, no it was a uh, raw umber on the kind of inner corner of the eye where the brown bit had kind of a weird streak, I'm not sure what to call it, but yeah the iris had this little weird streak of detail there, so I used the raw umber um, just on that part to darken that up there. I found the inner corner of the eye was really brown compared to the rest of the eye. And then just softening the edges up and just making the area a little bit more kind of orangey with the raw umber I think. No, raw sienna. <laughs> And here is another grey. I think this is the slate grey. Um, and that is just a really nice, again, a nice cool tone grey. And it's really good for adding depth to a piece, but it is quite a strong colour. So I like to use it quite sparingly with a soft hand because it can really kind of overpower an area. Um, so yeah, it comes across a lot more pigmented than the rest. Especially when layered on top of wet pencil. And then I do kind of go over that grey with a dark olive just to kind of bring a little bit more colour into that area because like I said the grey can be quite overpowering. So I like to add a little bit more colour um, back over the top of those shadows. Okay so next we're going to do the pupil. And I'm going to show you all the colours that I use to do the pupil. So to start off with we have Carmine Lake, Raw Umber and Violet. I find using more than one colour you kind of get a lot more depth and it really makes that black black. So yeah I'm just starting on the shadows and then I bring it right down into the pupil again avoiding the highlight areas. If you go over them that's completely fine, don't worry about it, it's not the end of the world. 
Um, but I do find it a little bit easier to leave them clear. So you can see that's just one layer of the pencils and then I go over it again with the raw umber. I find leaving the violet last is the best method to use but it really doesn't matter if you use common lake before raw umber they work well together either way but violet is quite a difficult colour to use sometimes so I use that one last. And then just wetting those colours together again with a damp brush and then I'm going to let it dry before adding anything over the top. Um, but it just really blends the colour and then makes it take layers really well. Okay, so here I'm just going over the highlight areas with a steel grey. Because they're not perfectly white, they do have kind of a little bit of highlight from the sky in them. So I just added this little blue colour, or steel grey, sorry, just on the highlights of the eye, so it'll kind of give them a little bit more definition. I think the most important thing to remember when you're doing an eye is its texture and its shape. So it's a very wet texture, so it's going to shine and reflect a lot of um, its surroundings. It's going to be very wet, which will leave a lot of highlights. Um, and it's also very round, so it's going to have a high point, which is your highlight, where the light really pops off it. And it's going to have those really shadowy, dark areas closer to the kind of skin and fur of your subject. So if you can pay close attention to that, make sure you darken the areas closest to the edge of the eye. And highlight kind of the top middle area, usually. Um, that will, yeah, give you your nice round shape. And yeah, just try and add lots of little kind of highlights, um, which will give you that wet effect. A lot of the times, not too much with this cat because she's black and white, um, but a lot of the times when you're doing animals, you can also see the colour of the fur ever so slightly, usually on the bottom portion of the eye. And again, that's because they're really wet and really shiny, so it reflects colour off it. So any kind of, if you have a brown horse for example, you might see a little bit of that brown in its eye. So yeah, pay attention to that if you can. And then I'm just using a little bit of white again to add those kind of details and give it a little bit of a pop. And that yeah, just really brings out all those little detailed areas we worked on before. So yeah, you can just see that I'm going through and editing any areas I think need to be darker or any areas that need to be lighter. I find, yeah, if you just kind of look at your reference photo and then look at your painting and do it every 30 seconds even, and you'll kind of get a good, um, yeah, a good understanding of your reference photo. And then you could just kind of see me getting the sandpaper out and that's basically how I sharpen my pencils a lot of the time. So I don't like to put them through sorry, I don't like to put them through the pencil sharpener too often because I find it really shortens your pencil's lifespan, if you will. So I sharpen them with the sandpaper to give them a nice point again. And here I'm just adding some little eyelashes into that highlight of the white. So just tiny little strokes of my pencil and that will create the illusion of I eyelash shadows, sorry. And again, like I said, the eye reflects everything around it, so they're reflecting the eyelashes. And going over the pupil with the black. So I did that after it dried, after it completely dried, and then yeah, I covered it over with the black pencil. And you can see how the pupil is really nice and dark now. And then using the black to kind of just go over any shadows I really want to pop. I try to use the black sparingly. I prefer to do my shadows with as many of the colours as possible first. But if I want a certain area to be darker, I will use that black. I'm not afraid of using black. I think it's a really nice colour to use sometimes. And then just using the steel grey to do that inner corner of the eye. And when wet steel grey does kind of really fade, it's a colour that doesn't stand out quite as much. But like I said before, it does still 
make every other colour above it that you put on top pop out. I do like to make sure all of my wet layers that I put down dry completely before putting any colour on top. Okay, so now the eyes are done and I'm really quite happy with those. At this stage I only really like to do the inner part of the eye and then I do the outer part of the eye as I do the rest of the fur. So I'm going to start in the nose and here you can see the colours that I'm using. So I have a steel grey, CB 10%, um, burnt sienna 50% and anthraquinoid pink. So the anthraquinoid pink does look really orange in this video unfortunately. But um, I'm not sure if you can see from the colour chart, but it is very pink. It's a very, very pink colour. So I like to use it sparingly as a base. So similar to what we did with the eye, I'm just going to kind of lay down those colours really, really lightly. You can barely even see them in the video. But I'm just going to use them really lightly. And I saw a lot of purple in the pink of the eye, just on the shadowy areas. So I'm using a mix of the pink and the steel grey to create those purple shadows. So the pink goes down across the whole of the nose. And then the steel grey goes kind of all over the nose, but mostly very heavily focused on those shadowy areas. So that's the outer corners of the eye and the bottom part. And then the burnt sienna, again, kind of in the same areas of the steel grey, just creating those shadows. And you can see now it's starting to shape, take shape, sorry, a little bit. And here I'm also adding a little bit of the dark flesh 50% because I thought it needed a little bit more colour. And then I'm kind of just using them. Um, alternatively, put one colour down. And then another colour and it builds up those layers slowly and creates the depth that I'm going for. And then when I'm happy with that really rough base I'm going to wet it again with a damp brush and just activate those colours and blend them all together. So I like to work from the lighter colour and then push that into the darker colour. If I push it the darker colour into the lighter colour I find it tends to lose all that tone that I've just built up. And then while the nose dries, I'm just going over the inner corner of it again with the steel grey. I do like to do um, and focus on another area of the cat while I wait for something to dry, which you might not really see in this video too much. Um, but yeah, I do like to kind of try and focus on something else while I wait for things to dry. So I'm just going to add those little shadows with the slate grey on the inner corner of the eye. They're not too detailed. Um, but yeah, you just kind of want to create that shape because obviously there is shadows there and you do need a little bit of detail. And then a little bit of black, just kind of separating the eye from that little fleshy inner corner. So you can see already how that area is starting to pop just by using the little black pencil to darken it up ever so slightly. And again I have got my pencil quite nice and sharp and I did that with the sandpaper. I find when I'm doing the bases the pencils don't need to be too sharp. They can be very blunt because we're just going to blend all that colour together anyway. But when I'm doing details I like my pencils to be very sharp. And then on the right corner, on the right eye, sorry, on the inner corner, I found there was a little bit of a highlight there, so I just used my white pencil to make that highlight pop. And then once I'm happy and I think the nose is nice and dry, I can just go over it again. This is with the steel grey and just add a little bit more shadows. You can see how I'm focusing on the bottom half and the two outer corners. And it doesn't really show too well on the video, unfortunately, but that is creating a really nice kind of bluey purple area on top of the pink. And that's just by mixing the pink and the blue together. And then using the CPO 10% because I find it's kind of similar to grey, but it's a really warm colour. So that works really well on this cat's nose as well. And CPO 10% is definitely a colour that I will use quite a lot for this portrait. And just paying really close attention to my reference photo, making notes of where those shadows should be. So obviously you can't see the reference photo on this 
video but I hope you have the reference for it up if you're following along and you should be able to see on the inner on the outer corner sorry on the bottom of the nose that yeah it's quite very shadowed because again like the eye there is a shape there it does curve round ever so slightly and again I'm just alternating the colours so you can see how I use the steel grey already and then I went over it again with the pink and now again with the steel grey so just by doing that it adds a little bit of depth and you're layering the colours together which creates that depth and then I blended them together with my wet paintbrush. I find by blending them together, it kind of almost flattens the layers so I can add more color on top of it. And then it's really kind of just rinse and repeat once that layer is dry. I go over it with the anthraquinoid pink. And then again with the steel grey and the, again the dark flesh over the top. So the dark flesh is a really nice colour to use for noses. So you can see how I have my colour chart on the left and that's because I find when I have, when I use these watercolour pencils they do look very different, dry versus reactivated, sorry. So you can see how I have little kind of diamond shapes or triangle shapes, so half of it is dry and then the rest is wet and I've, I've tried to show how much they will spread as well. So I'm just kind of looking at my colour chart and my reference photo and seeing which colour matches best for the nose. So I'm just using the dark flesh just to bring out that kind of, what's the word, the edge of the nose, sorry. And I use the violet pink also for that area. So you can see how I'm creating kind of the rough pupil shape as well. And then going over kind of the middle of the nose and just above where the nostrils are with the sepia 10%. And that's again just to create the shape of the nose. And here I use the light flesh and I'm just going to kind of, I use this I think because I felt it wasn't quite as warm as I wanted. So I used the light flesh just to create a little bit more of an orange colour on the edges of the nose to blend those the dark areas into the light areas a little bit more. And here I think I used the chestnut colour um, just to pop out those highlights. The chestnut is quite a browny colour, oh no it was brown sorry, it was brown. Um, uh, yeah I used the brown to kind of pop out those highlights a little bit more. I think it works really well with pinks because it's kind of a dark red but also a little bit more on the grey side. It's just a really good shadow colour for this cat's nose, this cat's pink nose. And then I use the raw umber again very sparingly, just on the very, like, underneath of the nostrils so you can see how it's creating a little bit more of a darker nostril area, a little bit more of a harsher line than the other colours we used. And then again you can see me kind of layering the, the colours on the little line of the nose and the bottom of it just to create those shadowy areas. So I use the violet pink and then the anthraquinoid pink and then again with the brown over the top. And the cat's nose is quite different to a dog's nose but also a little bit similar. It's kind of got a pimply type texture. Um, Similar to the tongue, I suppose, of a cat, it kind of looks like sandpaper almost. So really tiny little dots. Um, they're not quite as detailed as a dog's nose, but I just use those with, create the illusion of those, sorry, with my white pencil. But again, reworking any areas I'm not quite happy with, with my anthraquinoid pink and sepia 10%. I'm just trying to create colour and shape at this point, not focusing too much on the details.
So here you can see I think I'm sharpening my white pencil nice and sharp to get that point for those little pimply dot details on the nose. And a little tip I like to use when I want the highlights to really pop is I just dip my pencil into my water and I think I'll show you in the video how to do that but first I just wanted to darken up that nose because I wasn't really too happy with those edges. But now I'm nice and happy I just dip my pencil into the water you can see ever so slightly not fully submerging it. And then I kind of tested it on my finger made sure it was nice and damp See I'm blowing the water off so it's just a little bit damp and you can see how it's adding a little bit of pigment when added on the paper it really pops out those highlights more than it would dry. So if I just use the pencil dry it wouldn't pop out quite as much as it does when I use it wet. But yeah as, again like I said with the paintbrush I just want it a little bit damp. I find if it's wet it doesn't work as well if it's dripping wet so it doesn't work as well when it's a little bit damp. Yeah, the pigment kind of pops out a lot more and you can see that now just coming through on the nose. And then once the pencil is completely dry, I just go over it, over the top of it, sorry, and just soften it out really lightly. So I'm just kind of making sure those little highlights aren't standing out too much and they do blend and soften together. And I'm just going over those, as you can see, kind of with a circular motion, just to blend the highlights together. So that's it really for the cat and nose part of this tutorial. I will do the white fur next week and then the black fur after that with the whiskers on top. I hope this helped though, I hope you liked this video, please let me know, leave a comment, like it and subscribe, yeah, and share anything you do create from this tutorial with me on my social medias, tag me at sh Shanna underscore Lee underscore Art on Instagram or Shanna Lee on Facebook. Yeah, I hope this helps and thank you so so much for watching, bye!